Melachim Rishon, 1 Kings 7. But Shalom Ah was building at his own house 13 years, and he finished at all his house. He built also at the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was a hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above upon the beams that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against light in three ranks. And all the doors and posts were square with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And as he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits. And the porch was before them, and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne, where he might judge, even the porch of judgment, and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch, which was of the like work. Shaloma made also a house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to be his woman, like unto this porch. All these were of costly stones, according to the measures of hewed stones, sawed with saws, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measures of huge stones and cedars. And the great court roundabout was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of Yahuwah and for the porch of the house. And King Shalomah sent and fetched Eth Chiram out of Sor. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Sor, a worker in brass. And he was filled with Eth wisdom, and Eth understanding, and Eth cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Shalomah, and wrought all his work, for he cast eth two pillars of brass of eighteen cubits high apiece, and eth a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two chapters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapter was five cubits. And nets of checker work and wreaths of chain work for the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapter and seven for the other chapter. And he made at the pillars and two rows round about upon the one network to cover at the chapters that were upon the top with pomegranates. And so did he for the other chapter. And the chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work in the porch, four cubits. And the chapters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network. And the pomegranates were two hundred in rows, round about upon the other chapter. And he set up at the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up at the right pillar, and called at the name of therein, rather, the name thereof, Yachin. And he set up at the left pillar, and called at the name thereof, Boaz. 
And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. And he made at the molten sea ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about there were knops com compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing at the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above upon, upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was a handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths, and he made as ten bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges, and on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and caravim. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half. And also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round. And under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base. And the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their knaves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base. And the undersetters were of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high. And on the top of the base, the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. For on the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof, he graved caravim lions, and palm trees, according to the proportion of every one, and additions round about. After this manner he made eth the ten bases. All of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass. One laver contained forty baths, and every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases one laver. And he put at five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set at the sea on the right side of the house, eastward over against the south. And Chivram made at the lavers, and at the shovels, and at the basins. 
So Hiram made an end of doing eth all the work that he made King Shalomo, rather, Shaloma, for the house of Yahuwah. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapters that were on the top of the two pillars and the two networks to cover F the two bowls of the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars and F 400 pomegranates for the two networks even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapters that were upon the pillars and eth the ten bases, and eth ten lavers on the bases, and eth one sea, and eth twelve oxen under one under the sea, and eth the pots, and eth the shovels, and eth the basins, and eth all these vessels, which Chimram made to King Shalama, for the house of Yahuwah were of bright brass. In the plain of the Ardan did the king cast them in the clay ground between Kukoth and Sararathan. And Sholoma left eth all the vessels unweighted because they were exceeding many. Neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Sholoma made eth all the, the vessels that pertained unto the house of Yahuwah, eth the altar of gold, and eth the table of gold, whereupon the showbread was, and eth the menorah of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers and the lamps, and the tongs of gold, and the bowls, and the snuffers, and the basins, and the spoons, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, and the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Shalomah made for the house of Yahuwah. And Shalom brought in the things which David, his father, had eth dedicated, even eth the silver, and eth the gold, and eth the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of Yahuwah.